<clears throat> Legends of the Hidden Temple with your guide, Kirk Fogg. And here he is now. I don't see him anywhere. What is up, people of the world? It's me again, Alex Warmer, aka AP3 Jumped, with a brand new haircut. Yes, I finally have a new hair. Perping out all out again, <laughs> and drinking orange soda, <clears throat> which represents classic Nickelodeon. This is synonymous to uh, Kale Mitchell, as you as you may know. <clears throat> Why am I talking about classic Nickelodeon? Well, I, um, that's what this whole video is about, essentially. <laughs> Welcome to <clears throat> my newest Loud House episode review. For the episode, as you might have guessed, Legends. Now, where should I begin? I don't know. I guess I'll start with... This doesn't... <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so rude. This doesn't really <clears throat> mean much, but this happens to be the very first episode that was aired after the termination of Chris Avino. Not that that really matters anymore. I mean, I talked about, I talked about this already. Uh, I'd already talked about him already, but <clears throat> I'm going to say it one more time. <clears throat> the show will be in good hands. I mean, we won't really see any kind of tonal shifts, if any at all, until like the second half of season three. Because <clears throat> these these episodes take about six to ten months to produce. So, Chris and already started season three, and so, yeah, if you're worried about like, <clears throat> oh, this episode's so different because if Sevilla got fired. No, a, a, animation takes forever to produce. Like, it is one of the longest things that, that anybody can produce ever. <laughs> if you do, uh, let alone if you're just by yourself. Like, I commend all the um, people who can animate by, by stuff by themselves, but yeah. I'm uh, getting off topic. Now, what is this new Lighthouse ep episode about? Back to the topic at hand. Well, <clears throat> it is actually the very first crossover episode. What's it crossing over with? Well, Legends of the Hidden Temple, of course. Now, let me talk about Legends of the Hidden Temple. I was a huge fan of the game show. <laughs> that and Double There... Double There? Double... D sorry. That and Double Dare were, were the Nick game shows that I watched the most and have the most memories for. My mom, <clears throat> my mother, and my aunt are huge fans of Double Dare. <clears throat> and while I loved both game shows, I was always a bit more of a fan of Legends of the Hidden Temple. It was just a lot cooler to me. <laughs> I loved the host, Kurt Fogg. I loved uh, Dee Bradley Baker as Olmec. And, like, <clears throat> they were the best parts of the show. Some of the best parts of the show. And I would watch, since I was born in 1996, I would, the way I watched it was I watched all the reruns on Nick Gas. Remember Nick Gas, people, games and sports? Yeah. And oddly enough, the commercials only had stuff relating to Nick Gas. Kind of like how Disney Channel only has commercials that are relative to Disney Channel. Still to this day. That's how Nick Gas was. So yeah, my history with Legends of the Hidden Temple is very special. Uh... I have to say my favorite teams out of the six were the Green Monkeys and the Purple Parrots, I would have to say. And I learned what a Barracuda was from watching Legends of the Hidden Temple. Some of my favorite things about it, aside from the people who host who hosted, like I said, uh, <laughs> Kirk Fogg and, D and um, Olmec, they, they co-hosted the show. And also the main games were pretty awesome, and all, all and all the like the the prizes, the uh, consolation prizes were very nineties ish. Like I have a lot of memories watching those, <laughs> like just looking at the ads. I have a lot of memories with Legends of the Hidden Temple in general. Excuse me. And so yeah, it was a very. It is honestly one of my favorite game shows. Period. <laughs> I mean, I always wanted to be on that show. I think every nineties kid who grew up watching the show. I wanted to be on the show, and uh, out of the three seasons, it, it had a great run. <clears throat> now, the 2016 movie that happened last year, I really loved as well. I loved all the references, and the new characters were likable. I li I liked the new, new the new characters. I thought I wanted like the new characters was like like, like oh they're new, new new young Nickelodeon actors. They're not they're not gonna be good. Their acting is gonna be terrible. No, their acting was pretty. Um, in the Legends of Hidden Temple movie, their acting was was respectable. Like Andre Meadows said, <clears throat> it's pretty pretty respectable. And and 
a pre pretty decent acting, I'd say. By the way, the movie is is basically a literal take on the game show. I mean, it pulls anything and everything it can from the original game show. All kinds of things, even more even more things that you wouldn't expect. Like, I don't want to spoil some things, but <laughs> but it, it some dialogue and stuff and there are things referenced there. Like, <laughs> some of the fundamentals of the game show are referenced too. Like, like the time limit, and even going home with a damn prize. <laughs> but yeah, I know I've blabbered on about Legends of the Hidden Temple. Let's get on to the actual episode. Now, <clears throat> what's the actual episode about? Well, Lincoln and his dad, <clears throat> this is the first episode that stars them together. Like, this is the first time we get to see them in, in, in an episode uh, about them, basically. Like, we've never seen them in a pairing before in an episode yet. So this is the first time it does, this, episode, this show does that. And this is one of the few episodes that doesn't have any of the female Loud Family members at all. It just stars the two male Loud Family members. And they're trying to find an activity to do. And they try to find something Lincoln likes to do, and they try to find something uh, Lynn Senior likes to do. And then they try to uh, <clears throat> explore brand new activities like scuba diving. And one, and, but then once they see <clears throat> an ad for Legends of the Te Hidden Temple on TV, they're like, "Oh, <clears throat> you love that show? I do too. Let's go on." And then they <clears throat> dress up as you guessed it, the orange iguanas. That's the team that they decide to go for. Which on a random well, side note, I don't know in the original series, I don't know if you could pick your own team color or not. Maybe that was chosen for you. But for the sake of the narrative, some things are changed for the sake of the episode, which I'll get to a little bit later. So they dress up as the orange iguanas. They have lit and actual iguana heads and tails made of paper mache, which is something that wasn't present in the original series. That was mainly, that was just for this episode. And so they go on the show, and the ori the original opening is re recreated in the Lotto style. And Olmec does this thing. D, D. Bradley Baker returns once again as Olmec, and Kirk Kirk Fogg once again returns a as himself too in this episode, so it's really awesome. They both both of those two look great in the Loud House style. I love. <laughs> I especially love um, Kirk Fogg's caricature, whom coincidentally enough looks like another character, Hugh, from from Study Muffin. Didn't realize that until I read that up on the wiki. Now, Kirk Fogg is actually the very first guest star to play himself in the show. So it's awesome to, <clears throat> to find out that he exists in the Loud House universe. That, that's, really, that's really cool. And then, once Lincoln and Lynn Sr. arrive, they come across the teammates of the Silver Snakes, <clears throat> who are this pair of father and son. By the way, this episode is a father, father and son themed episode, which I'm pretty sure didn't happen in the original game show. <clears throat> but the people who are <clears throat> on the Silver Snakes are these, like, really just, like, bulky, like, 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 jerkish people. <laughs> like... Like there, there's the son. There's the son. His name is Steak for some reason. He's actually voiced by Chase Norman from Henry Danger, and and his dad, uh, Stan, this big, really big, bulky guy, kind of reminds me of Bluto from Popeye a little bit. He's voiced by Cooper Barnes. So the two, two of the main stars from Henry Danger also guest star in this episode. Which, I mean, I don't watch Henry Danger. I mean, I've watched it, but I don't necessarily like it. <clears throat> I mean, J Jace Norman and Cooper Barnes, I like them as people. I, I really do. <clears throat> I mean, I also respect Sean Ryan Fox, who's also in Henry Danger. I respect him for being the very first voice of Lincoln Loud, because Lincoln Loud has had three voice actors. So anyways, <clears throat> after the <clears throat> Lincoln and Lindsay are come across these two, like, meatheads, <laughs> I forget their last name. The characters, they have really weird last names. I can't quite remember. I remember it starts with the letter S, but... Mm -hmm. So then, for the first time in over 20 years, we get a brand new episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple in the form of a crossover with the Loud House, and it starts the same way. It starts off with the moat. You have to get across. 
and th and in this in this episode, for for sake of the narrative, uh, people have have to get enough points. You don't really get pennons of life in this episode, which is interesting. But pennons of life are referenced earlier on in the episode, like during one one of the scenes in the audition tapes for Lynn and Lynn Senior and Lincoln. Lincoln kind of look. He's splitting an, an old makeup. It looks like a pendant of life that he's splitting up, but it's split. He's his pendant is split up horizontally as as opposed to vertically, like it was in the original show. Kind of like Olmec's mouth is opening up and down. But yeah, after the mo moat uh, mini game is finished or challenge, if you will, the next challenge they do is the. Ever so awesome steps of knowledge. And by the way, the theme of this episode, because every episode in the game show had a theme, the theme, is this, uh, the theme of this episode was about the lost city of Atlantis. And so two teams answer questions about, about, <laughs> the, 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 uh, this is so, this, this whole episode is just really nostalgic to me, by the way, like, <clears throat> I'll get to that later, but they do the steps of knowledge. And, uh, the orange iguanas win this round, and then uh, <laughs> they do another mini game that <clears throat> that I totally forgot forgot about this one. Or I actually did. I have, I have vast memories of this show. I'm talking out the side of my butt. <clears throat> the next the next challenge they do, which is part of the temple games, which comes after steps of knowledge, <clears throat> they do this little challenge like. They're like jumping way up in the air. There's this pole right here, and they're trying to get these rings inside the pole. And then they're jumping up and down on, on these bungee cords, trying to get the rings in there. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that being game all too well, actually. And then by that point, Lincoln, Lin, Lincoln, and his father are kind of, kind of like arguing. Not arguing, I'd say, but they're like being. Uh, Kind of hateful towards each other because one of them, they're not cooperating with each other, and and by the next mini game, would by the next mini game, it's where you assemble pieces of a puzzle that actually shows up as a door. When you put these stone pe pieces of the puzzle onto this into this little uh, tablet, it forms a door. Excuse me, and the the silver snakes win this round. And by that point, uh, don't worry, Lincoln and his father are just kind of just... The, for the first time, they argue on screen. It's the first time that they've argued on screen and have had disagreements towards each other. But then right afterwards, they they make up and realize how, how kind of insecure both of them are being. Well, I won't really say that, how just, like, just mean to, to each towards each other that they're being. And the very last mini game is, as you should probably notice, the Temple Run. That's the very last game, and unlike the original series, both teams compete to find the treasure. I don't remember the name of the treasure, but they all go through the, the through the temple. Both both teams go through the temple. First the orange iguanas go through. And they go and they go through all the famous rooms. Uh, they and they find a temple guard, <laughs> and, and they didn't, they don't have <clears throat> penance of life to give them. But in, instead, they they escape from the temple guard by linking tickling the temple guard with with a feather that came from out of nowhere. And then eventually they get to the shrine of the silver monkey, which nobody can freaking put together for some reason. <laughs> nobody could put that damn monkey together. It's three freaking pieces. I don't know why nobody could put it together. Not even Kirk Fogg, uh, in, in, bless his heart, not even Kirk Fogg in the TV movie could put it together. That's kind of a spoiler. I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll have a spoiler tag for that movie in the description, since I forgot to say so in the thing. <laughs> but then they, <clears throat> Lincoln and Lynn, they find the, the treasure, which again, I can't remember the name of for some reason. It looks like it's a little piece of pepper that, pepper. <laughs> pepper. <laughs> it's a little piece of paper that kind of resembles the secret, the uh, Krabby Patty secret formula. That's just came off the top of my head. <laughs> they find the artifact, and then it's a silver nice turn. And like, oh, watch. That is literally the amount of time that they took to find that damn artifact. So, 
They want, they got the artifact fastest. Oh yeah, and the, by the way, there was this bet that <clears throat> the teams made towards each other. <clears throat> if the Silver Snakes lose, they have to wear the Orange Iguana costumes, and if the Silver Snakes win, then the Orange Iguanas have to go back on the airport in their underpants. <laughs> With shoes on, that shows them it shows weird because walk like you need the arch support <laughs> you, need, you just need arch support no matter what <laughs> but anyway um once they get to the airport they're actually being being applauded lynn and lincoln they're being applauded for their performance at the game show and then the silver snakes members we get to see them in their own white outfits they have freaking mohawks by the way <laughs> and they just like run off and like 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 screw this place basically is what they do <laughs> and uh that's the episode, and, oh, and, and by the very end, Lynn and Lincoln get caught by cops, and like one with one of them being voiced by D. Bradley Baker, <laughs> the the one who talks to them, and so yeah, they vi obviously violated some uh, dress codes, and then that's the end of the episode. Now let's talk about <clears throat> all the little extra ex uh, <laughs> stuff. First off, I love this episode. It's for the very first crossover episode for the Loud House. <clears throat> Legends of the Hidden Temple was the perfect choice to have as a <clears throat> as part of the first crossover. <clears throat> Reviving a classic Nick show once again, one year after another, and <clears throat> it's just really awesome. Watching, <clears throat> it's like I said earlier, after 20 plus years, we find, we actually get a brand new episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple in the form of a Loud House crossover episode. And watching the episode... <clears throat> They're out watching them do all the mini games and the temple run and all that. It's very nostalgic. It feels just just like like watching the game show. Nothing's really changed. <clears throat> like n n none of the <laughs> nothing's really changed at all, <laughs> and that, that's really awesome. What's even more awesome is that <laughs> they have the original soundtrack too. <gasps> the ta the title screen has a, <clears throat> the 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 title theme for the Legends in the Temple. It has the title theme for the original game show. And even more of the original soundtrack is heard <laughs> in the actual episode. You hear the you hear the Temple Run music. It's just it feels like it's, it feels like I'm watching the show while listening to that <laughs> and listening to Olmec and listening to Kirk Fogg and just walk, looking <laughs> at everything. It's just really awesome. And <laughs> like I said, Legends of the Temple was my favorite Nick game show. Double Dare being a close second, and to see it being brought back, it's just just awesome. So, it was awesome seeing Kirk Fogg and Olmec in the Loud House art style. And Temple Guard 2 and everything else. They, they look great in the Loud House art style, by the way. And another thing, Olmec's mouth actually animates in this episode. And the same thing happened in... Yeah, his mouth didn't fully animate until the TV movie last year. And then they actually continued that for this episode. <laughs> So he no his, his mouth no longer moves like a puppet, which is interesting because I figured they would keep that for and for this episode like mim like mimic the original game show down to a T like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it was awesome he, just he, hearing <coughs> Kirk Fogg and Olmec's voice, especially Olmec's voice, is just incredibly nostalgic. And the music too, like I said, <coughs> I'm going to talk about a few little inaccuracies. Well. The only reason certain things are inaccurate is because of the fact that they did that for narrative. Like, there's only two teams this time, and like throughout the entire episode, when there's usually supposed to be six: the red jaguars, the blue barracudas, the green monkeys, the purple parrots, the orange iguanas, and the silver snakes. This time it was just the last two: orange iguanas and silver snakes, which. Like I get, like I said many times, it's just only for the sake of the narrative, <clears throat> and <clears throat> never in, in the original game show could you <clears throat> could both two different teams go through the temple run. Only one, only the final team could go through the temple run. And in this case, the <clears throat> the team who got it back to Olmec and Kirk Fogg the fastest won the won the episode and won the prize. They didn't <laughs> they didn't reveal what prize the Silver Snakes got. It, it would have been awesome to see uh, an ad uh, an ad for for like Space Camp or whatever, but yeah. That would have been the icing on the cake. 
Another thing is awesome, and actually new to this, are Kirk Fogg's um, <coughs> entrances and, exit, eg <laughs> and exits. So, like him, like him swinging down the vine, that's kept for original ser series, but some things are, are brand new, like <laughs> Kirk Fogg riding on a Jaguar. <laughs> Kirk Fogg <laughs> freaking flying with, with leaves, like, <laughs> as if he's like <laughs> Raccoon Mario or something. <laughs> and he even <laughs> jumps <laughs> out of Olmec's freaking mouth as a grand entrance. That's really freaking awesome. So yeah, I rate this episode a 9 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. There was really nothing wrong with it. It was just an awesome nostalgia trip. Best first crossover for the Loud House to even have. <clears throat> like I said, Legends of the Hidden Temple was the perfect IP <clears throat> to have as the first to use for the first crossover. And I think I'm done. If I keep rambling on anymore, I'm going to fanboy it like freaking crazy, and I just <clears throat> won't know when to stop. So yeah. The choices are yours and yours alone. Good luck. So yeah. <laughs> if you like this video, <clears throat> then don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned for my next Lighthouse episode review, <clears throat> Mall of Duty. I definitely look forward to that tomorrow, like I said. I'm trying to space these videos out, cause that's why I didn't do both episode reviews in one day. <clears throat> Random fun fact about the episode. <clears throat> this uh, Legends and Mall of Duty, they were the they were they were um shown together as a full 30 minute segment, which <clears throat> they rarely ever do anymore. <clears throat> and it's also the very first at what the first episode to air on a Saturday night since uh, Price of Admission and One Flew Over the Loud House. And also the first Nick Nicktoon <clears throat> to be airing on like, on prime time at television hours since Rugrats All Grown Up, I think. So yeah. I, I, now I think I'm done rambling. <laughs> I'm Alex Homer, aka AP3 Jumped. Thank you for watching. Until the end, that is it for me. <clears throat> now I'll see you soon. We'll be right back after this. Tomorrow. Don't go away. It'll be awesome. Ah, Tumble guard. <laughs> those would you would never know when those things would come out. One sometimes they would possess the trees, and those things. Yeah, you would never know when when they would just come out in the original series. They would come out of literally anywhere, and you would have to brace yourself for that. Half pennons of life aren't worth a damn either. You need a full pen of life in order in order to save yourself from a temple guard. Yeah. Oh my god, this is my longest review. <clears throat> well, this episode was recorded not in front of live studio audience audience, but instead recorded in my own kitchen. Hey Roanoke, Virginia. Not Nickelodeon Studios at, or in Orlando, Florida. Because, yeah, Nickelodeon Studios doesn't exist anymore, if you don't already know that. Goodbye.